Hey, thanks for joining us today. Here in our channel, you can catch all of our messages and live services. And our hope is that you would experience the presence of God in a very real and tangible way. That's right. And if you want to make sure that you never miss a message again, all you need to do is hit the subscribe button below this video. Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning. All right. So listen, I know it's cold outside. But some of y'all act like you're still frozen. Do we need to turn up the heat a little bit, get you moving a little bit? No, because then you're going to fall asleep. <laughs> so we can't turn up the heat. See the quandary we're in? Um, but hey, I want to... You're going to bring the heat today. Is your mic on? We'll bring the heat. You're going to bring the heat today. I'm bringing the you're heat? You're going to bring the heat. Did you just call me hot? <laughs> well. Oh, that's so sweet. I don't know if you should clap to that. I don't know, I don't know how I feel about that. No, I'm Awkward. <laughs> oh, what were we saying? Hey, babe, why don't you go ahead and yeah. start us off, please? Today, we love you guys. We do. We love you, family. Thank you for letting us be our awkward selves. Um, the, you guys, today is Vision Sunday, and uh, yes, we're so excited. Um, we, are, we wanted to uh, kind of share with you, our family, uh, just where we feel like the Lord is leading us in 2022. We're really excited about some, some things coming up, and uh, as, as I talked about last week, um, our word for 2022 is all in, all in, and uh, what better way to show God that your, your obedient answer is yes by going all in during this 21 days of prayer that begin today. And so, um, you know, we've done this for many, many years. We've started our year off um, with, with 21 days of prayer and fasting. And so over the course of the next three weeks, 21 days, um, here's what we would encourage you to do and what going all in looks like for these 21 days. Of course, these are 21 days of concentrated prayer. And so, uh, you know, there's a lot of craziness in the world right now, and, um, and the Bible's very clear about what happens when God's people pray. And we believe in the power of prayer, and so we, you know, we just want to stand in faith no matter what circumstances tell us, no matter what we see on the news, no matter what is going on around us, we believe in the, in the word of the Lord our God, and we will stand firm on his promises. And so uh, in these next 21 days, we want to focus our time in prayer. You know, if that means that maybe you have never uh, had a, a devoted time of prayer every single day, well, we would encourage you, this is a great time to start. 15 minutes. Give God 15 minutes of your morning um, and, and take some time to pray over our nation to pray over our community, to pray over our church, to pray over our lives, the, the needs that you know that are around you. And um, we also encourage you during the, these uh, 21 days to fast something. Um, we do believe that, that you know, there, there's a moment uh, during G the ministry of Jesus where, you know, the, the disciples are trying to, like, cast out a, de a demon. And Jesus says, no, this can only be removed uh, by prayer and fasting. And so we believe that there are mountains that are moved when we will take a, a concerted effort to fast and pray for the needs that are around us. And so what you fast is up to you. Now, in the past, you know, some of us have decided, I'm going to fast something different every week during the 21 days of prayer. Um, some of you are going to go, you know, for a full, you know, fa juice fast or water only. And um, if that's the way God is leading you, go for it. Um, some of you like to do the Daniel fast, and uh, some of you um, may fast social media. I would suggest we all could use a fast from social media. I don't know about you. <laughs> Uh, maybe it's fasting, you know, your TV time, your Netflix, whatever that looks like for you. Um, but here's what we believe is that, that how, how much you go all in is how much you're going to get back. Does that make sense? How much you give towards, towards these 21 days, how much you invest is what you're going to get out of it. So the more that you invest, the more that God is going to bless you and, and speak to you and so, so fasting, that's up to you. Um, we also, every Wednesday during the next 21 days, three Wednesdays in a row. So starting this Wednesday. Starting this Wednesday right here. Um, if you enjoyed worship this morning, then you need to come on Wednesday because it's just an hour of that kind of worship. Soaking worship, you can join in and, and sing along or you can sit and just rest in the presence of God. Um, we will be praying over the prayer requests of, of the, that are submitted uh, by family, by 
our church family. And, um, and we will also have a prayer team here available for soaking prayer, you know, just to take the time to pray over your need, to pray over your heart, to, to let the Holy Spirit come and, and speak to you in that time. So um, I'm just telling you, like, you really don't want to miss any of those Wednesday nights. You will be blessed, and God will uh, move in your heart. And then finally, we like to celebrate uh, at the end of our 21 days with an encounter night of worship. And uh, for those of you that have been to our encounter night of worship, you know that it is something that that you just don't miss. Like God is going to move. Uh, there will be a powerful word given that night, powerful ministry, and um, just be expectant for that coming up. And so we just want to encourage you guys during these 21 days of prayer, if you want to know what our vision is for this year, it starts right here in our 21 days. It starts right here as we go all in. And, and you know, the Bible says in, in James that when we draw near to God, he will draw near to us. Again, the more we draw near to him, the more we can experience his presence during this time. So as we look ahead into the next year, if you'll recall from last week, um, and again, if you missed last Sunday, um, go back and watch the podcast because we'll kind of give you a foundation for everything we're going to be talking about in the next couple of weeks. But um, if you'll recall from last week, the big idea for this series of All In, this is an invitation that we believe God is inviting us to as a church, that we would give God one year of our life and then watch and see what he will do in us and through us. Give him one year. And I know many of you have been serving the Lord for many, many years. And, and this may seem like elementary, but what we're asking you to do is to go all in with him for one year. Give him one year, put him to the test, and watch and see what God will do in you, in your heart, in your circumstances, in your uh, emotions and feelings and anxiety. Watch what he will do in you and what he will do through you because he wants to use you in mighty ways. So we believe that if you will, will give God that year that you are going to experience his presence and power like you never have before. Now, we talked about last week, and again, this is the core uh, passage of scripture that we're going to be really meditating on. And I would encourage you guys daily, open this passage up, let it soak in, let it just marinate in your heart. But this is the passage, the words of Jesus, where someone really smart asked him what the most important thing in life was. And this is what Jesus told him. The most important commandment is this. Listen, O Israel, the Lord our God is the one and only Lord, and you must love the Lord your God with all of your heart, all of your soul, all of your mind, and all of your strength. The second is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. No other commandment is greater than these. So Jesus is saying what is most important in life. And I know many of us, have, we like to start the year about thinking what's important, you know, what, what goals we want to achieve, what, what intentions we have for the new year. And Jesus says nothing that you could imagine, dream, or conjure up is as important as this, that you would love God with all of your heart, all of your emotions, all of your feelings, all of your will, that you would love him with your cravings and desires, that you would love him with all of your soul, who you are, what makes you you, your personality, your wiring, that you would love him with all of your mind, your thought life, your intellect, that you would love him with all of your strength, that every place your foot uh, goes, every opportunity that you have, you would love him and honor him in everything that you do. Jesus says this is more important than anything. And equally as important is to love your neighbor as yourself. And so, um, as I alluded to last week, and I promised that we would talk about it um, this Sunday, so we're really excited to unveil uh, what we believe is probably one of the most significant pivots that we have made in the history of our church. And, and um, so uh, what we're unveiling, and you've heard us talk about it a little bit here and there, is that we have a whole new way of helping you to grow closer to God closer to each other, and helps you, empowers you to serve our community better. And so we'd love to, to unveil for you today what, what we're launching next month is our growth groups. Our growth groups, yes. Those are our leaders that just like, 
were shouting. They're, they're like pumped. They're ready to go. They spent 10 weeks in training, and uh, they're, they're so excited for, for growth groups. Now, you know, um, when we talk about going all in, did you know that, that we actually have 168 hours in our week? In our week, we have 168 hours, and, and many of us have this false, you know, perception that going all in with God is serving on a Sunday morning for two hours. Like, like we give God that two hours on a Sunday morning. Some of us are, you know, more like an hour and a half. Some of us are here for, for both services, and, and we're like, yeah, I'm all in with God because I'm here on Sunday morning. Well, what we truly believe is that going all in is not just two hours on a Sunday morning. We believe that going all in with God and his family actually is something that happens in like the other 166. That this is something that is embedded into your soul. This is who you are. This is what you do. This is what you're about. That you are all in all week, not just on a Sunday morning. Now, I know that, that being all in on a Sunday morning is the easier route. You know, you kind of feel like you check a box. You, you, it's like, you know, I, I'm doing this stuff. I'm here. I'm serving. I'm praying for people. But you are only experiencing a fraction of what God has for you. Because we really believe that, that real life change, if you really want to see God move in your life, it will only happen at, at its fullest in the context of relationships. We believe wholeheartedly that you are only experiencing a fraction of what God has for you when you come to church on a Sunday morning. So let me just be clear. What we are telling you today is that Sunday morning is not the most important part of church life. Did you know that church doesn't even mean building? Like we think building when we think church. The actual biblical meaning of church is the gathering of people. And so we believe that that gathering that's happening on a weekly basis, not just on a Sunday when you're sitting in rows, not facing each other, we believe that your growth and your life change is going to happen when you're sitting in a circle, facing each other's awkwardness, facing each other's, you know, like mess, facing people's diff, like challenge in, in life, facing their problems. When you are in that circle and you're able to pray for each other and love each other and serve each other. That's where we believe real life change is going to happen. And so, um, you know, what? Here, here's, I just want to kind of give you, like, this is what a growth group, why, why it's distinctive from what you may have known from the past in a small group or what we used to call connect groups. Now, growth groups is, is a way that we believe that you are going to be able to grow simultaneously in three directions. The first direction that, that you are going to grow in a growth group is up. That there will be a spiritual formation that's taking place. That every month that you will be diving into God's word with, with your friends. That you're getting to grow uh, spiritually as you learn more about Jesus, as you dive into scripture. As, as seasoned believers are able to kind of help bring you along and grow in your faith. We uh, also see that you're going to grow inward, that you're going to grow as a family, as a, as a collectively, as a group, that, that you are going to learn how to love each other well, to serve each other well, to, to get through those awkward, you know, sometimes there's, there's a storming phase that happens in, in group life where, where you're kind of like, oh, like you're going to go there. Oh, you just said that, didn't you? And so, but, but we believe that, that, that we're, that growth groups are going to give you the opportunity to work through those things and grow together in community and relationship. And finally, you'll be growing outward. You'll be growing in, in helping you to open your eyes and see that there are people in need outside of these four walls. That there are people in your neighborhood, people at the grocery store, people uh, at, your, at your gym, people all around you who are starving and desperate to know the power of Jesus. And you have that inside of you. And we believe that, that growth groups are going to help you grow in that way, that you not just grow towards God and grow towards each other, but you begin to grow towards the people around you, that you would love your neighbor as yourself. So what does it look like? What, what is kind of like the rhythm of a growth group? 
essentially, um, you know, every month has uh, four weeks. And so each week will kind of have a different theme. Week one, you're going to have that Bible study, that spiritual formation where someone's going to lead us in a, in a Bible study, or maybe you're discussing the sermon. It's going to look different every month, but, but you're going to have this time of, of being spiritually formed and, and growing in your faith. Second week of the month is the family meal where you're going to have a good old fashioned potluck and everyone's going to bring food and you're going to enjoy Enjoy each other's home cooking, and it's going to be so good. You're just going to spend time together, get to know each other. The third week, we want to uh, let this be a time of equipping you. So maybe uh, on that third week, it might be like how to share your testimony or how to uh, read through the Bible in a year or um, how to pray for people. So we want to teach you and equip you how, uh, how to actually use the faith that you've been given. And then finally, that fourth week will be a time of actually activating you. So it might be that you get into small groups and you share your testimony with your small group. It may be that that you are actually going to go serve your local homeless shelter and serve a meal, or you're going to go and and look for someone in downtown to pray for. I don't know what it will look like for your group because that's up to your group to decide, Uh, but but you are going to have this this flow and this rhythm, and I want you to hear that word rhythm that's really important, this rhythm of discipleship and this rhythm of growing in these three directions. So, um, you know, again, we just encourage you as, as, as we talk about being all in that, that this is something that you don't just consider. We're, we're, we're basically saying that Sunday morning is not where, like, th- this is not it. Like, where it's at is in these growth groups. If you want to truly This is a portion. This is a portion. It's still important. You still need to be here on Sundays. We're still meeting on Sundays. We're still meeting on Sundays. Um, Unless I don't know something. No, no. Okay, just a second. Thank you for clarifying. What we're saying is that that your growth, you know, is going to happen during these growth groups when you're going through these rhythms. So the final thing that I wanted to mention um, that's really important about growth groups is um, that we in the past have kind of had small groups in a semester-based system. So, you know, the way it's gone before is you'd have 12 weeks with a group of people and then it's over. And then we'd open up a new semester and you'd join a different group for 12 weeks. Well, we really believe, again, that real life change is going to happen in, in, in being with the same people for a, an extended period of time. So what, what we're uh, asking for you is, is as you join a, a growth group to know that you are actually committing to this group for an entire year. Now, this doesn't mean that you are like in a small group every single week of the year. We're still going to have the semester um, timeline where you'll go 12 weeks, there'll be like a month break, and then you'll go another, you know, 12 weeks and then a month break. It'll kind of still have that same uh, routine and, and rhythm that we're used to. Uh, but we ask that you stay in the same group and really, uh, g- again, give God that full year of your life with the same people and watch and see what God will do in and through you. So that is our growth groups. This is the big kahuna for 2022. Absolutely. And um, if I could just put a uh, exclamation point before I jump into to my portion is um, when it comes to growth groups, one of the things that we were really feeling at the beginning of 2021 is this whole idea of being rooted. And what we found is that we had a lot of Christians before 2021, during 2020, is a lot of Christians um, kind of did the thing, but as soon as a storm would come, it kind of blew them all away. And you know, there's some parables about that of because the roots weren't deep and Jesus told some stories about that. So instead of like, we're, you know, we're just, if you don't know us very well, we're just not a church that's going to focus on beating people up for making bad decisions or not doing it right. We're just going to, what we're going to do though, is we're going to focus on, well, how do we, how do we help people get closer to God? How do we help people grow their roots deeper? How do we help people like when the next storm comes? Cause you know, there will be some other storms, some you know, I mean, we, we live in 2022, um, and, um, you know, we have an election cycle, at what, like two years from now? Praise the Lord. Everybody's excited about that, right? Um, <laughs> that was sarcasm, by the way. And the countdown begins. Oh, boy, are we just pumped. Um, just kidding. That was sarcasm. But, but the reality is, 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 how do we help? How do we help people? And as we kind of t- dug into scripture, is that we would just see that, 
Scripture really focused on being rooted in Christ's love. You know, uh, uh, we'll talk about this in two weeks, but, you know, um, about 70% of the New Testament, uh, you have the Gospels, and then, uh, I'm sorry, 70% of the Pauline letters to the church are all about each other, all about the each other, because the each other part is important. How we, how we lo- learn to love each other is such an important part of growing closer to Christ. And then, of course, the go into all the world and make disciples, the preach the gospel, the great commission piece, that, that we see these areas. These are very foundational pieces of us growing closer to Jesus. So, so if you're here and you're kind of just checking this out, or not the church, but Jesus, the whole faith thing, you're just like, then that's cool. You know, like, but if you're serious about growing closer to Christ and you're serious about really growing in him, and uh, we, like, this is it. Like, Sunday morning is where we come together, we celebrate. This is where people that are newer to the faith come in and they, they, they get introduced to Jesus and, and there's a place for us to worship, you know, uh, but we want to grow deeper, we have to get in circles. That's, that's how we grow deeper. You know what I mean? Everybody good with that? Good. I was just going to add one more thing. Oh, and wait, there's with, with the Sunday morning thing, yeah. you know, um, we really believe that our, as growth groups really take off and as you're going all in in your growth groups, we believe that Sunday mornings are going to become much more missional, that we're actually, as a church, we, like you guys here, us, we come here on a Sunday morning to serve the seekers, those that are kind of looking for community, looking for faith, and that we're able to come and serve the seekers where we're growing in our growth groups, but we're here to serve on a Sunday morning. Amen. So I better jump into my part or we're going to be here and uh, the Baptists are going to beat us to the buffet. So we better hurry. So I'm sorry. I, I don't know what You haven't told from. a Baptist joke in a while. I That's... know, because I got so much blowback. I got oh, no. emails. And, <laughs> man. I mean, there, I mean, you don't make Baptists angry, because this is what... Okay, anyways. Okay, move along. Move along. See, I got to stand up, or I'm just going to spin my wheels. All right. So here's the thing. is that That is the what we're doing. The what we're doing is very important. But uh, at a risk of overstatement, and uh, I, I just want to give that caveat, that disclaimer. I, I understand this is a risk of, of an overstatement, but, but we really believe that who we become in 2022 is almost more important than what we do. Because what we do should be an overflow of who we are. So if we are really focused in on who we are becoming then who we are as a church, because what we do is we kind of spend a lot of time on like, you know, the church may really grow if we like change that light or if we like put a new sign out front or, you know, we kind of like the what, we kind of focus in on the what and, well, I, I, I would go to that church, but that pastor told too many Baptist jokes or whatever, you know, and <laughs> uh, I know you're out there, uh, but anyways, uh, that was pointing to the camera, not you. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but, you know, who we become, as we know in this world today, the world is looking for people who are just, if I was to boil it down, good people. <laughs> you know what I mean? We, we, we like look around and we're like, oh God, why is this happening in this world? It's almost all done by people. So if, if, if we could become more like Christ, then we would be able to represent Christ and Christ would be demonstrated in the world more. Because Christ does not do it, a lot of times he does not do it supernaturally, he does it very naturally through the supernatural in our natural selves. He's looking for the church. He's looking for the church who says, here I am Lord, send me. So who are we becoming? So <clears throat> there's this um, part in Matthew, Matthew 12, where Matthew was, or Jesus, I'm sorry, Matthew was quoting the prophet Isaiah and the prophecy about Jesus, and he said this about Jesus, and his name will be the, what's that word? Hope of all the world. That the name of Jesus will be the hope of all the world. So Jesus is the hope of the world. 
So you know what that means? That Jesus' followers should be marked by hope. That Jesus' followers, when people think of Christians, when people think of Jesus' followers, the first thing on their mind is, boy, those sure are hopeful people. Boy, they're a little naive of how hopeful they are. Because when I look around, I see a big old mess. <laughs> but, but those Christians, they always seem to think the best of what's happening in the world. They always seem to kind of just always see the bright side. Now listen, this isn't just optimism. Hope is not just optimism. Hope is not just ignoring everything, but it's seeing God's eternal purpose even in the mess. And I believe that God is calling His people to be hope bearers, that we are people of hope. We are people of hope. Not just optimism, but hope. The type of hope that has roots. The type of hope that has grit. The type of hope, sorry, my voice is already going. I better chill out because we have another service. Um, but, 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 you know, there is this um, piece when Paul's talking about the, um, he's talking to the Ephesians. And this is what he says to the Ephesians in and, and Ephesians 2, 12 and 13. He says, in those days, you were living apart from Christ. You were excluded from citizenship among the people of Israel. And you did not know the covenant promises God had made to them. And look, you lived in this world without God and without hope. This is what Paul is saying to the church. These are Christians. He's saying before you knew God, you did not know hope. But now you have been united with Christ Jesus. Once you were far away from God, but now you have brought, been brought near to him through the blood of Christ. You know, in 2021, I came across this really, really sad stat. Well, I, I just came across this stat. That in 2021, that over 100,000 Americans between the ages of 18 and 49 died of overdose on fentanyl. Now, a lot of that fentanyl was laced into other drugs, heroin, cocaine. But, but that 100,000 deaths in America in 2021 of our like what's considered kind of the prime age, 18 to 49, that is more deaths than COVID, cancer, suicide, and car accidents put together. Now, why is that important? You know, I'm not being Debbie Downer. I'm not trying to like bring us down. But this is really, really important because sometimes we can kind of get so consumed with our little world. And sometimes that world is kind of outside of this world, uh, of, 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 of the world. But it's important because what that tells us is that the world is looking to escape from its problems. You know, drugs is ultimately just an escape from reality. It's, it's trying to find just a high because I feel so low without it. And, 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 and they're looking for this place because they have no hope. They're looking to escape because they have no hope. And meanwhile, what we know through Scripture is that Jesus is the hope of the world. So we have a world that has no hope, and they're dying by the six digits. And yet, the church has the answer. The church has the hope that they're looking for. And this is why it's so important that the church can't just be so consumed with what color our walls are and where, what type of signs that we have. We have to be a church that's so obsessed about bringing hope to hopeless people or what the heck are we even doing if we're just going to come and sing some songs and read a couple scriptures and play church on Sundays. Meanwhile, the world is literally killing itself because it has 
no hope. And we have hope. Or we should have hope. And if you don't have hope, let me introduce you to a man named Jesus today. And as you give your life to Jesus, hope will fill you. Because hope is not by listening to a cool sermon or, or a great worship song. It's by being in the presence of Jesus. Because Jesus is the hope of the world. Is it okay I'm a little passionate about that? I, like that's, this, is, this is really important, you know, because... Because if we, we can kind of just talk about, oh, this church, is, we're, this church does this and this church does that. And like, who cares if it doesn't bring hope to the world? This is our call as a church. Bring hope. Turn to your neighbor and say, bring hope. Bring hope. So not only do we bring hope, not only are we people of hope, but we're people of passion. We're people of of passion. There's this one verse that's always stuck out to me in Matthew 11:12. And Jesus said, "And from the time John the Baptist began preaching until now, the kingdom of heaven has been forcefully advancing and violent people are attacking it." And it's always kind of stuck out to me, but you know, without exegeting this all today, one of the things that I wanted to bring out is you know, there's, a, there's this certain level when Jesus is talking about the kingdom. It, it's forcefully advancing. What is it forcefully advancing against? Well, it's not people. It's forcefully adga- advancing against the principalities, against the kingdom of darkness. Why? Because the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, is forcefully advancing against darkness. Why? To bring more people into the light salvation, saving people from their hopelessness and their despair, bringing people into the kingdom. That, my friends, does not happen when we are apathetic, when we could care less, and it's all about us. It doesn't happen. The kingdom does not forcefully advance on the backs of lazy people. It doesn't. I mean, come on. Because this is really important to understand. When we are so consumed with ourselves, we are not part of the kingdom forcefully advancing. Now, now this isn't about, if you're not careful, please don't hear me say that it's all up to us. But we are the ones that God uses. At least we are the ones that God, we, we should be the ones that God uses. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like we should be the ones that God uses to bring hope to a, such a hurting world. And do you know that the devil can't defeat you? He cannot defeat you. So you, you know what he'll do. Why? Because Jesus said that the same, uh, um, I'm sorry, not Jesus. Paul said the same power that raised Christ from the dead is in you. He couldn't defeat Jesus. That means he can't defeat you because you have the same spirit. You have the Holy Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead that empowered him. So he can't defeat you. So what does he do? He distracts you. He discourages you. He, dis- he causes disappointment. So then you go, nah, this isn't worth it. And over the past couple years, I think we've uh, all, all of us, have experienced enough discouragement and disappointment. And could I just call us as a church to step out of that a little bit? That the world is designed to disappoint us. I mean, like, that is the whole point of the world because the world does not have hope. The world does not have joy. The world does not have any of the fruits of the Spirit because it does not have the Spirit. Therefore, it is designed to disappoint us. This is why when we as Christians put our hope into things of the world, we always find ourselves disappointed. That's why we always feel empty whenever we go and try to fulfill ourselves with things that are not of God. We always feel empty at the end of the day because it's not designed to fill us. It's meant to distract us. So, we have to be people of hope. We have to be people of passion. And lastly, I think God this year is calling us to be people of joy. Could I just give you a very non-religious description of this? Could we as a church just freaking have fun? Could we loosen up a little bit? Could we 
not spend all our time when we're talking to each other about the problems of this world? Could we spend a little bit of energy encouraging one another a little bit more? What is God doing in your life this week when you get together? Instead of spending all your time being Eeyore and talking about the political situation or why you don't trust the CDC or why the unimmunized people or uh, unvaccinized people. <laughs> Vaccinized. I'm from the South, y'all. <laughs> oh, it's time. <laughs> Manny goes, get him off. Saved by the bell. <laughs> That's funny. All right. We are people. <laughs> no joy, thank you. So there's this often quoted scripture in Nehemiah. I wanted to read this portion and then we're going to close. You know, the people had, in Nehemiah, the people had come back to Jerusalem. They had a vision to rebuild the walls and reestablish Jerusalem as God's holy city. And they had faced opposition. They had worked so hard and they finally built the walls back. Well, in celebration, in celebration, <coughs> they asked Nehemiah and Ezra, Ezra was one of the priests and the other Levites, the other priests, to come and read God's law to them. And when they read the Old Testament law, they started weeping and mourning. <laughs> like, wait, as a pastor, I can understand this. Like, you give people what they want, then they don't like it. But anyways, that's a whole nother thing. <laughs> Got my amen corner. <laughs> Hallelujah. But, but you know, and, and this is what's happening is in this moment, something that should have made them joyful was starting to make them sad because they were seeing it through fleshly eyes. And look at Nehemiah's response to the people. It says, Nehemiah continued, go and celebrate with a feast of rich foods and sweet drinks and share gifts of food with people who have nothing prepared. Be generous. This is a sacred day before our Lord. Don't be dejected and sad for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Now, this is really important. The joy of the Lord is our strength. You know, when we focus on the law of the Lord, it brings sadness. Why? Because we were never meant to measure up to God's law. That was the whole point of Jesus, was to bring the perfect sacrifice that no one else could ever bring to fulfill the law. But sometimes we could get so obsessed about the law of God that we forget about the joy of God. But it's the joy of God that's our strength. It's not following all the law that's our strength. It's God's joy. The joy of the Lord is our strength. And I, here's what I love though, is he combined the natural and the supernatural. The joy of the Lord is our strength. But as we do that, celebrate by eating good food, drinking good drink, and being generous and inviting others to the table. And he combined the joy of the Lord of our, is our strength with enjoy life. Enjoy life. We're not supposed to be these fuddy duddies that kind of like, like got a corn cob up our stuff. And, you know, like instead, like we're not supposed to be those type of people. Like, they're, like, listen, those type of Christians don't make any difference in the world. They don't make any difference. They're the angry street preachers. They're the people who people make fun of. They don't, they don't save anybody. But if we enjoy life under godly principles, <laughs> let's be clear, because there's a lot of that going on in the world today that's not. But anyways, under godly principles, enjoying life, having fun, eat good food, drink good drink, invite others to your table, be generous and sharing. And look, and then the Levites pipe in, the other priests. I like the, they, they said they, they too quieted the people. Tell them, hush. Hush. I just I hear them country. Hush. Hush. Don't weep. For this is a sacred day. So the people went away to eat and drink at a festive meal. I want you to see that. This is really important. 
they could have walked away and been, man, this, this, we built the wall for this to feel so horrible. And now we're just crying and like, man, what mourning. But they listened to what the priest said and they went away and enjoyed a festive. Everybody say festive. A festive meal. This is important. Joy being in the church is so, so important. They enjoyed a festive meal to share gifts of food and to celebrate with great, what? Joy. <clears throat> because they had heard God's word, words and understood them. So, here's another way to put all of this. If we had to choose that we take God seriously, but we take ourselves with a grain of salt. And I think a lot of people have it backwards right now. They take themselves in their situation way too seriously, and they take the commands of God with a grain of salt. Could we switch those this year? And just watch the fruits of the Spirit just explode in your life. Watch the fruits of God's love, joy. Could we be people of joy this year? Could we become people of joy? Now listen, and I, I, in my passion, I don't want to just say everything's fine outside and the world's going great. And if, if, if you think it's not going great, well, that's, your, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying us being intentional about being passionate for the things of God. And as we're passionate for the things of God, that he fills us full of hope and joy. And that's the fruit of our lives. Why don't we stand? <clears throat> if you guys could hear my heart for just a second as we stand, and whether you're this is like your first Sunday or your hundredth, I want to speak into you for a minute. You know, as we were praying and preparing and everything, one of the things that stuck out to me is, as your pastors, one of the things that we feel very passionate about this year, and we feel like God's telling us to be strong on, is not to let you settle for second best in your life. To not just pat your, pat your shoulder, pat your back and go, you'll figure it out someday. Meanwhile, you just live in the pig pen like the prodigal son. But that we call you to more. We call you to become more towards God in Christ. And to, today, <clears throat> I just want to speak that God's plan for your life, and I want you to hear this, God's plan for your life is not just for you to survive another year. Let me say that again, because I feel like that's the goal for some people right now. Just avoid the Rona. That's the goal of life. I don't mean make it light, but you know what I mean. There's more. There's more that God has for you than just surviving. God has thriving in your future. He did not die on a cross just so you can survive another year. He did not pour out his Holy Spirit on us and make all of heaven accessible for us just so we can barely manage to live. All of that was so that we can thrive, so that we have access to the King, we have access to the Holy Spirit, so that he can fill us and then we can thrive. Amen? Do you believe that? So why don't we pray? First of all, and Christine, I'm going to ask you to pray us out. But first of all, if you are at a place where you are not connected to the person who brings hope, if you are not connected to Jesus, if you are not following him, if you are at a, where you come in today and you're just, you're at a place where maybe you even, you've made a commitment a long time ago, but the reality is, is you're not following him. You're not connected to the hope giver. 
the hope bringer, the hope provider. Today, there's no other step except for give, give him your life. To say to, today, Jesus, I give you my life. I'm disconnected from you and I need to connect to you today. And I do that by submitting to you and saying that you are my Lord and Savior. For a lot of us though, we may be following Jesus, but we need to kind of, we've been hearing a lot of chatter and a lot of noise that's kind of distracted us. And we need to kind of get kind of back on track, <laughs> if you will. And I know there's some watching online, whether you, you got COVID and you're at home or you're traveling or whatnot. And this goes for everybody, whether you're watching online or whether you're here in person, is that we, you know, we just have to be honest with ourselves. This isn't about the pastor calling it out. You, over there, you need to get your head on. No, this isn't about other people. This is about you being real about where you're at spiritually, mentally, and just be a big boy or a girl and get back on track. I mean, how's that for an altar call? Be a big boy or a girl. <laughs> Put on your big boy pants. All right, you better pray. Pray us out, please. <laughs> Holy Spirit, come. <laughs> oh, Lord, we love you. We love you. We love you. The picture that I had in my head as, as Joel was speaking just a moment ago was um, kind of like this. I see like this bubble. And, and some of us have kind of like been sticking our finger in it or maybe like a toe. And, and what I see is God is inviting you in into it, like all in. So in this moment, could you just posture yourself? Posture yourself however that looks, hands open to heaven, saying, here I am, Lord. God, I've heard your word today. Let me not take it for granted. Let me not ignore what you're speaking to me. Holy Spirit, come. Give me the courage to go all in with you, to go all in with what you're doing in my family, in my church. God, give me the courage to say no to myself and to say yes to you. Come Spirit, fill us in this moment. God, I pray that Crossroads would be known as people of hope, people of passion, and people of joy, God, that when people see us around our community, when they see us, when they interact with us, they see people that are full of you, full of all that you are. So even today, as we start this 21 days of prayer, Jesus, would you come and fill us, fill us with your thoughts, fill us with your heart, fill us with your will. God, let us become more like you as we step into all that you have, as we go all in with you in 2022. We give our lives to you. Some of us for the very first time today, some of us renewing that, that vow to Jesus. We give our lives to you. We thank you for your salvation, your mercy, your grace. And today we say that we are going to walk forward in following you and being your true disciple. We love you, God, we thank you. And it's in Jesus' name, everybody said together, amen.